standing in front of your hammock, grab the edge in the center, the very front edge. Just hold it in your hand and shake the hammock from side to side just to ensure that your hammock is all the way open and not folded in any way. You're gonna grab that edge, take your right hand, place your palm face up, place the hammock on the palm. Turn around to face the front of the room and place that hammock on your shoulders like a cape. Once that hammock is resting on the shoulders, just leave it there. Just begin to walk backwards, taking the hands down, reaching for that bottom edge that is now behind the knee. You wanna walk back till the hammock's pretty much behind the knee. And then there you can easily sit into the hammock and either walk or swing forward. You wanna make sure that your backside is not on the ground with maybe one or two fists distance between the backside and your mat or the ground beneath you. Reach the arms up and around the back. Now reach those arms up to grab the right side of the hammock like a rope. So both hands are wrapped around the hammock. Like a rope, slide it down to your chest. You're gonna lean your left shoulder into the hammock. As you press away with the arms, try to straighten those arms as much as you can. It's gonna give you the most space to be able to kick or assist that right leg over to the other side. Now you're gonna grab the hammock that's behind the knee and pull it to the heel of the foot and extend the leg. Reach the hands to the other side, grab that fabric and do the same thing on that side, bringing that hammock to the heel of the foot and then extending the legs out into a straddle. Take a deep breath in to lengthen the spine, lifting up through the crown of the head. And the more you uh, press those legs wide, the more you'll feel a stretch. Now take the arms directly out to the sides like a T, pressing the back of the arms into the hammock, breathing in. And on the exhale, we're gonna press those arms a little bit harder into the back of the hammock, giving you an even deeper stretch. So just continue breathing here, releasing some tension from the hammock, and then pressing again when you're ready to deepen the stretch once again. You can also deepen the stretch by pressing into the hammock and then shifting your chest forward a little bit. That's going to make the stretch a little bit deeper if that's what you're looking for today. Just continue to press and release a little bit. And then keeping the back flat against the hammock, you're going to start to bend at the waist to the left, reaching that left hand towards the knife edge or pinky toe side edge of that foot. That right arm is gonna reach up to the ceiling and you're gonna to continue to bend to that left side as that right arm comes over to that side as well. We're reaching the hands as far as we can and the back is flat against the hammock, just as bend at the side of the waist. Continue to breathe here with the focus being with the exhalations, just allowing some tension to release from the body. Pressing down with that left leg, we're bringing the arm, right arm over to the other side, pressing back into the hammock once again, and then bending at the waist to the right, keeping the back flat against the hammock. The left hand's gonna reach towards the left outside edge of that foot, the pinky toe edge. The left arm is going to reach up and over. Back is once again flat against the hammock and you're just reaching those hands as far as you can. Settling in here, using your breath, relaxing the body, releasing tension, getting that nice deep stretch in the back of the legs and the side of your body. From here, we're gonna inhale the arms back up to the ceiling and bringing the palms together, looking up at the hands. From there, you're gonna turn your shoulders towards that left leg and then hinging from the hip, so keeping the spine long, we're just gonna hinge from the hip as we reach over that leg, squaring the shoulders over that left leg, reaching towards the toes. If you can reach the toes, go ahead and grab the foot or the toes, pulling back, if not, just reach to either the shin or the ankle. You're lifting through the crown of the head so that spine stays nice and long. As you fold over that leg, breathe into the stretch. Let the stretch, let your breath invite you into this stretch. Keep breathing. Use your breath. Maybe sinking a little deeper if you find the space to do so without force. 
Now begin to press that left leg down, reach the hands a little bit further, and then both palms come up to the ceiling, arms straight as we turn our shoulders over towards the right leg, keeping the spine long, just hinging from the hip, reaching towards the toes. Remember, it doesn't have to be, your fingers don't have to reach those toes, but if they can, go ahead and give them a pull back or just let those hands rest on the shin or the ankle and use your breath again. Enjoying the stretch, not pushing past your limits. As long as you feel the stretch, you're doing the job. The job is going to be done. Continue to breathe, continue to relax. Reach those hands a little bit farther. See if you've got more space to take it a little deeper and then reaching those arms up to the ceiling and then arms out to the side, back into that T. Let's press into that hammock again, deepening our straddle stretch. Remember the back of the arms are pressing, your spine is still long. Maybe pressing that chest forward a little bit more. And then we're going to bend the knees, letting the knees fall open wide in like a butterfly pose, allowing the soles of the feet come to, to come towards each other. And then resting the hands either on the knees or at prayer at the center of your heart, thumbs at your sternum. Close your eyes, relax your body. Dipping the chin to your chest, stretching the back of the neck and take a moment to set an intention here for your day or for your class. With your chin to your chest, just allow your left ear to drop over to your left shoulder. And then lift the chin slightly. Dip the chin back to your chest, let your right ear come towards your right shoulder. And then lift the chin slightly. And just roll your head back again to the left, chin to chest and ear to the left ear, shoulder. Chin comes back to the chest as you roll the head back over to the right side. Right ear comes to the right shoulder. We're just loosening up the neck, releasing some tension that we may be carrying in the neck and shoulders. Feel free to move that head side to side, whatever feels good. Maybe you notice the knees just soften a little bit more. Maybe those soles of the feet just naturally move further away from each other as you begin to relax the body even more. With each breath, you just become a little more relaxed. Enjoy the feeling of just floating over the ground and that mat beneath you. This is your safe space. This is your sensory deprivation chamber where all the busyness of life is outside and you're in, in the present moment. Remember, this class is not about rushing. It's about going inward, listening to your body, listening to the signals it gives you. Next breath, reach those arms out to the side, straddle those legs back out. Let's press once again into the hammock. And then we're gonna bring the hammock to the back of the knee. So releasing one foot and then the other, letting those knees fall open wide as the feet come to the mat. And then reach those arms behind you, interlacing your fingers down at the back of your spine. Roll the shoulders up to the ears, down the back. And then monitoring your resistance here, press the hands, the knuckles actually, down to the ground. And then monitoring your resistance as we lift those arms to a place that's comfortable for your shoulders. Listen to those shoulders. If they're really tight, don't lift your arms back so much. Use your breath, finding more length in that spine, opening up the chest, the heart chakra, and the front of the body.
And we'll let those hands drop back down. Unlace the fingers. Grab the hammock in front of your chest like a rope. Bring those feet back together. Knees are still bent. Now we're going to open up space in the back of the body. Pressing into the hammock, rounding the spine, chin to chest, maybe even tucking the pelvis a little. And as you're pressing that hammock away, you're going to kick that right leg back over or assist it with the hand to bring it over to the other side. You're going to be uneven in your hammock, so reach that left hand up over to the other side of the hammock and just wiggle your way to the center. Now we're going to place our thumbs up high on the back edge of the hammock. We'll slide those thumbs down. So make sure your thumb is really inside the hammock and you're pressing against. Your other fingers are going to be out to the side. So we're not grabbing the hammock. We're just placing our thumbs on that inside edge. And press the space between the thumb and the index finger against the hammock so you create a little tension. You feel that tension there. With that tension, just let those thumbs slide all the way down. As your thumbs come towards the waistline, you're going to just continue to press down. Turn the inside of the wrist more forward. Use the heels of the hands to press down. You may need to do a little hop to adjust. The goal is to get that hammock edge at the sacrum, just behind those, tailbone, that, uh, those hip bones. Continue pressing down. The best way to hold that fabric there is to roll the shoulders back, press them down, keep those elbows squeezing together. That's going to give you enough strength and stability to lower all the way down without letting that hammock slide too high up the back. Once the back of your shoulders reach the ground, we can adjust that edge. You may find that there's a lot of fabric there and it's uncomfortable. So holding onto that edge, take the heel of a foot, place it inside the hammock and use the heels of the feet to kick the fabric away. As you kick the fabric away, you're moving some of that extra fabric that's at that placement on the back away from you. You may wanna have extra fabric there that might feel good. It might feel like a nice little deep tissue massage. If so, leave it however you're comfortable. If not, kick more of that fabric away so there's just a thin edge. Now check the placement of the hammock. Take your fingers, touch those hip bones on top. Reach those fingers down the side of the body and to the back. Make sure that hammock is below the hip bones, but above the butt. Let the arms just rest on the floor. Let your palms just face up. Let your fingers naturally curl into your palm where those fingers and those hands are nice and relaxed. Now just scan your body, relax the face and the torso, the hips. Relax those gluteal muscles. Don't squeeze or clench the glutes. Relax the thighs, the knees the shins, the calves, the ankles, those feet, those toes. Allow your body to just sink here. You're being supported by the center of your body, the fulcrum point of your body. Let the hammock support you. Let the ground beneath you support your upper body. Just let go. Take some time here. Wait until you've really released some tension and feel completely still. No stress, no tension in the body. And when you find that stillness, just leave the upper body where it is. Let that, those legs begin to sway from side to side. So the only thing moving is from the waist down. So the legs are moving side to side. They're still heavy. We're not creating any jerky movements. We're just letting the legs sway side to side, like a pendulum, one side to the other. And then just bring your awareness to where you feel that your body is working. Feel a little strengthening and stretching. The lower back, the sides of the body, feel those obliques, those abdominals, working to allow the movement to continue as the legs go side to side. Use your imagination here. The eyes closed. Maybe you're 
in a hammock in a tree and the wind is just blowing gently, allowing the legs to sway. Use any imagery that makes you feel comforted and safe. And now we're going to just create circles here. So you're gonna allow the soles of the feet to come together. Knees are gonna bend and fall open wide. So as you're taking clockwise circles, you're bending the knees as you come to one side, drawing the heels in, and then straightening the legs, making complete circles in a clockwise motion. We are lubricating those hips and the knees and then we're gonna reverse direction going in a counterclockwise motion. Just continue to make those circles like you're stirring with the legs. And then just allow that motion to come to a stop on its own, not forcing, just resisting the movement so that you're not continuing that motion. Allow those legs to come to a stop in their own time. And then we're gonna to begin to walk the feet out. So just kick the legs out until the soles of the feet come to the mat. Once those soles of the feet have reached the mat, you're gonna reach the arms up to the hammock closest to you, that edge closest to your upper body. And you're gonna walk those feet in so that you're on the balls of the feet and heels are close to the backside. You're gonna let those knees drop to the right side and your right hand is gonna reach for the edge that is closest to the knee. You're gonna pull all that fabric back as you grip that entire right side like a rope. Knees will fall to the left. Same thing on that side. Left hand's gonna reach to the edge closest to the knee and pull back. So now you should have just the bum wrapped, both hands wrapped around the hammock like a rope and you're gonna press those balls into the feet of the feet into the mat as you lift the hips and then move all that fabric so that you have one rope directly underneath those hip bones, right at that sacral line. And then you can walk those feet out. Feet should be about hip distance and legs at a 90 degree angle. Just let your body sink into that supported bridge pose. Release the hands again. Palms can just curl back up into, uh, fingers can just curl back up into the palms. Maybe moving your head from side to side, just stretching the neck a little bit. Make sure that hammock is not at the waist. It's below, just underneath those hip bones, just below the hip bones. You're gonna flex your right foot, lifting the toes from the ground. You're gonna keep that foot flexed and you're gonna engage your abdominal muscles to support your back as you lift that right knee towards that right side of the hammock. Remember, keeping that flexed foot. And you're gonna just drop the foot, maybe coming close to the ground not quite bringing that heel all the way to the ground, lifting up and down. Engage your abdominals so that you're not using so much of the hip flexors. If your hip flexors feel tight or tired, it's because you're probably not engaging the abdominals enough. Lifting and lowering, coming close to the ground. Then we'll let that, those soles of the feet come together. As they come together, you're gonna let those knees fall open for just a moment. Don't hold your breath, just breathe normally. And then we'll draw those knees back together. Now we're gonna lift the toes on the left foot so the heel is in contact with the mat, engaging the core. We lift that left knee up and down, just as we did on the other side. Keeping those abdominals engaged, not overusing those hip flexors. And lower that foot to the ground. Now we're gonna walk our feet to the outside edges of our mat. Let your heels come to the outside edge of the mat. Turn the toes in, let the knees fall towards each other and bring your awareness to the sacrum, right where that hammock is wrapped around underneath the body. Breathe here. If this causes discomfort or pain, just skip this. Walk those feet back in. 
It's a very gentle stretch of the sacrum, but some people with lower back problems might find this um, uncomfortable. Now we're gonna reach those arms up to the ceiling and we're gonna reach, turn those palms to the back of the room, bend the elbows and just place the tips of the fingers to the mat, lifting the chest and the back of the head off the mat. We're gonna walk ourselves towards the front of the room maybe two steps forward. You want your hammock to be at a slight angle towards the front of the room. So the hammock is not directly straight down from the plumb line. We're gonna lift that right leg, bringing the knee back to the hammock again, point the toes, and then externally rotate that right leg so that the knee is on the opposite side of the hammock, but you can see it to the right of the hammock. We'll do the same thing on the other side, point the toes, externally rotate that Left leg, bring the big toes to touch. So just let those big toes kiss. Knees are open wide. We'll straddle the legs wide. And then reaching the hands up, we're gonna place the hands on the inside of the thigh, scooping that pelvis. So as you tilt the pelvis towards your face, your legs will come closer to that face side. Just gently pull down on those backs of the thighs. So if you're a little bit more flexible, you can slide those hands down to maybe the calves and continue to pull down, or the ankles continue to pull down, or for the fullest expression of this pose, if flexibility allows, you can grab those big toes and pull them down to the ground. Feet should be flexed here unless it is extremely uncomfortable, then you can keep those feet relaxed. But if you can flex those feet, it's gonna give you a deeper stretch. Continuing to breathe. We're stretching the entire spine here and the back of the legs at the same time. Now we're gonna bring those feet together. Make sure when your feet come together, they're on the same side as your face. They are not on the same side as the front of the room. And you should feel the hammock behind or to the outside edge of those ankles. So those ankles are just resting against the hammock. Releasing the hands to the floor. We're just gonna to begin to press those ankles into the hammock as we do. We're lifting the hips high up to the ceiling, squeezing the glutes, lifting those hips up as high as we can. The hammock's gonna put pressure on the inner thighs to help to open those hips a little bit more. We're inhaling, knees are open, lifting the hips, and lower, relax. Press and lift, lower, relax. Continue, move with your breath, find your own pace, find your own speed here. Press and lift. Now with those hips lifted, you're gonna take your hands to the thighs, thumb on the inside of the thigh, fingers are gonna wrap around the top of the thigh to the outside of the thigh. Now keeping those hips lifted, we're gonna straighten the arms, pressing the hands into the legs, creating that traction. The arms are doing all the work here. Once you press those hands into the thighs and straighten the arms, you can just relax the legs. Your arms are gonna do the work. This is gonna give a release of the lower back. Once again, if this is uncomfortable, if this hurts you, if you feel any pain or discomfort in that lower back, do not push. Just bend those elbows, release the hands from the thighs. If it feels okay to do so, be gentle with yourself. Don't push too hard. And then bend that left Elbow, press a little bit more on that right side. And then straighten that left arm, bend the right elbow, press a little bit more on the other side. So it's just like you're moving side to side, just gently massaging, gently opening up space in that lower back. and then release those hands back down to the ground. Now we're gonna do, lift those, well we're gonna lift those feet up a little higher. So just slide those feet up a little higher. So that little diamond shape that you see with your baking with your legs is going to just be a little bit bigger. I'm gonna squeeze those knees together. It may not be easy to do at first, it may be a little uncomfortable, but try to squeeze those knees as tight as you can. Then open the knees, lift the hips, and drop down, squeeze again. Open the knees, drop the hips, lift the hips. Drop the hips, squeeze those knees together. 
Let those knees fall open and just relax here. Now we're gonna take that right leg and let it come out to the side. Let that weight be heavy. It's just hanging heavy there out to the side. Windshield wipe those legs, bend that right knee, extend that left leg out to the side. Just continue alternating like your legs are windshield wipers side to side. Slowly, not fast, moving at your own pace, feeling the weight of that leg, and then bringing both ankles back. Now that right leg's gonna come back out to the side, the left ankle's resting against the hammock. Flex that right foot, keeping that leg low and heavy. Keep it low, don't let it raise up. Start to rotate the leg. And as that leg comes straight to the front of the room, point those toes and elongate that leg. Just envision that leg growing longer out from that hip. So right now, your toes should be reaching towards the front of the room directly from your hip. And when you're ready, just lower that heel to the ground. So when you lower that heel to the ground, if your quadricep is very tight or your hip flexor is very tight on that right side, and this is very uncomfortable for you, just slide the heel in, let the knee bend a little bit. So with that right foot on the floor. So also, if, if your foot is unable to come to the floor, you can always have some blocks handy and just let that foot rest on a block. So this next deeper stretch may not be for everyone, so just listen to your body. Take that right hand as you're, if you're trying to reach that right foot. Slide that foot in, see if you can grab that ankle. And if you can, pull that heel in closer. It's important to remember to keep that right knee in the same line as the hip. So don't let that knee fall out to the side. If it is falling out to the side, maybe just, just skip this one part and just hang out where you were last comfortable. So we're gonna try to tuck the knuckles of the right foot, the, the right toes underneath. This is gonna really give you a deep stretch in the top of that right foot, in that ankle, in that shin. If you can get the knuckles to rest and tuck under, stay here for a few breaths. This could cause a little cramp, just a little warning. And then release, bring that leg back out in front of you, dropping that heel. Now extend that leg once again, engage the abdominal muscles. It's gonna help protect your lower back before lifting that leg. So keep those muscles engaged as you lift that leg, point those toes back towards the front of the room, and then externally rotate that right leg out to the side, and then bend that knee, bringing that ankle back to the hammock. The left leg will now extend out to the left side, letting it be heavy, flex that foot, press that heel as far away as you can, and begin to externally rotate that leg so we're reaching towards that front of the room again, pointing the toes, letting the leg grow even longer. Longer out of that hip, find some length there. Really reach those toes. And when you're ready, just let that heel of the foot drop. Remember sliding that heel in, bending the knee if this is too much for you. And then if you're gonna go for that stretch of the ankle, front of the ankle, just reach that left hand towards that foot, slide that foot in towards your hand, tuck the top of those toes underneath, press the knuckles of those toes down into the mat or the ground beneath you. Make sure that left knee is straight out from that hip, not out to the side. Continue pressing down. Breathing at the same time, of course. And then we're going to untuck the top of those toes from the mat. And let that foot come back out to either a bent knee position or straight, and then engaging the abdominals once again, pointing the toe, lifting the leg straight towards the front of the room, 
and then externally rotating that leg back out to the side, bending that knee so that that ankle is now once again resting against the hammock. From here, we're gonna reach those hands up and we're gonna grab both sides of that hammock between the legs like a rope on each side. We're gonna pull down as hard as you can, really pull down, straddle those legs nice and wide. And then as if there's resistance, creating some resistance, you're gonna point those toes and draw those legs together, heels together, toes out, point those toes high up to the ceiling, pull down even harder on that hammock. So we wanna keep pulling down. We're gonna bring that right knee into the chest and we're gonna extend that left leg towards the front of the room. We're gonna to start to bicycle, bringing the left knee into the chest, extending that right leg towards the front of the room. And just begin to bicycle those legs. You can play around with pointing the toes and flexing the toes. Hammock is still underneath that, uh, it's on that sacrum. Hammock doesn't move here, you're just moving the legs. You're bicycling the legs, then go ahead and reverse your bicycles going in the opposite direction. This is really good for mobility of the hips, lubricating those knees. And then those legs are gonna reach up to the ceiling. Now we're really gonna pull down on that hammock. Pull down, keep those elbows towards the midline of the body. Use your biceps, pull. Keep those elbows drawing in towards the body. And as you're pulling down on the hammock, you're just gonna let the legs come over the body into a plow-like position. If plow is not something that your body wants to do, you can always bend the knees, keeping the knees into the chest. Most importantly, you wanna have your face looking straight up to the ceiling. You wanna protect that neck. The more you pull down, the deeper you can go. If you're in the full plow pose and flexibility allows, you can bend the knees and let the toes Find the mat behind your head. If that's not in your flexibility, do not worry about that. Remember, you can keep those knees bent and then and the thighs in towards the chest. Now, so let those hands slide down the fabric. Let the back of the arms, the triceps, and the elbows reach the mat. Use them as a part of a stable base. And then begin to slide those hands further down if you can. And then we're gonna push that hammock towards the front of the room. As we're pushing it towards the front of the room, the hammock's coming out from underneath us. And we want to slowly, with control, lower the spine one vertebra at a time, back down to the mat until that lower back finds the mat. We'll bend the knees, we'll catch our ankles in the hammock, extend the legs, and extend the arms over the head. Big breath in. And the next exhale, we're reaching the hands up to the ceiling and lifting the hips at the same time, placing the hands back down on the mat. We're squeezing the glutes to help us lift those hips up. Arms are coming up as the hips come down, arms reach behind. Maybe think of having a beach ball in between your hands, lifting that beach ball up as the hands come down, the hips come up and vice versa. Hands go back, hips go down. Lift the hips, lower the hips. Arms are gonna still reach back behind you. Lift the hips, arms come up and then down to the mat. Hold it here, squeeze a little bit more, maybe lift those hips a little bit higher and slowly lower all the way down to the ground. Pressing that lower back down to the mat, no space between that lower back and the mat. So we're gonna flex the feet, bring the heels together, toes out, and with tension in the hammock, keep those let those ankles keep the tension in the hammock. We're gonna draw those heels in towards the body, breathing in as the heels come in, and then you can do a little energy sweep with the arms. As the legs come in, the hands just sweep the front of the body, and as the legs go out, sweep back down. Inhale, sweeping the arms up towards the head, Exhale, sweeping the arms down towards the feet. Moving with your breath. Inhale, draw the heels in. Exhale, press the heels away. And then lower those hands down to the ground. We're gonna press the ankles against the hammock here, creating tension. Pointing the toes, stack the right 
foot on top of the left. Keep those toes pointed. We're gonna paint the front of our legs with some imaginary paint. So pick a color, it could be your favorite color. Pretend like your foot is a paintbrush. You're dipping that foot in the paint and you're gonna paint the front of your shin, up the ankle, up the shin, and try to just go even past that knee, higher than the knee. And then from there, extend that right leg to the ceiling and drop that foot back down on top of the other. Paint the front of the leg again, sliding the foot up the leg, lifting up, flex the foot as you drop that heel back down. Point the toes, paint the front of that left leg, extend the leg, flex the foot, let the heel come back down. Continue moving this way. There's no rush. Paint that leg. Extend the right leg, flex the right foot, drop that heel down. Point. Paint the leg. Extend that leg. Keep that, so we're gonna keep that knee bent and we're gonna just let the big toe touch the knee, maybe just above the knee. Arms are gonna come out to the side to give you some stability. And keeping that toe just above that knee, let that right knee drop to the right side opening up. Now bring that knee back to center and let it drop back open to that right side. Lift it up. Let it drop to that right side. Bring it back to the midline. And now bring that knee in towards the chest. You're going to take that right hand and you're going to grab the outside edge, that knife edge of that right foot. And we're gonna bring that sole of the foot up to the ceiling. Think of stamping that foot on the ceiling so foot is flexed. Pulling down on the outside edge of that foot. See if you can bring that right knee more towards that right armpit or that right shoulder. And stay there, so this is your half happy baby. It's just gonna to rock to the right, little rock side to side. If flexibility allows and you'd like to, you can extend that right leg out to the side or just keep that knee bent just look over that right shoulder. Let that knee bend, bringing that foot back to center. And then place that foot back into the hammock. Arms are back out to the side. All right, we're gonna get ready to paint the other leg. Pick maybe the same color or pick a different color. Point the left toe, stack that leg on top of the right. We're painting the front of that leg, the shin, extending the leg to the ceiling, flexing the foot, dropping the heel down. Point the toes, slide it up that leg, extend the leg to the ceiling, flex your foot and drop the heel down. Keep going, bending the knee, Reaching the foot up to the ceiling, flexing and lowering. No quick movements, nice and slow. No rushing. Slide it up, extend it high, flex the foot, drop the heel. Just continue on. And lift that leg high, lift that knee into the chest, let that knee fall open, bring it back to the center nice and slow. Let that knee fall open to the left side, pull it back to center, drop it back to that left side, back to the center. Now flex that foot. Left hand's gonna reach for that outside edge of that left foot, pulling the knee into the chest. You're just gonna stamp that left foot to the ceiling. Knee is still bent and in at the chest. And then start to bring that leg over to the side. So the knee is, we're pulling down on the outside edge of that foot, 
trying to bring that knee closer to the armpit on the left side or the floor or the shoulder. Keeping the knee bent, half happy baby. Just rock a little side to side. And continue rocking or extend the leg. My little puppy here is kind of in my way. She's keeping the energy and the vibe high. She's such a good little girl. Our little yoga girl. She has her own Instagram, actually, at a dog named Carly, C-A-R-L-I. If you like dogs and want to follow her, I'm sure she would love that. Go ahead and place that <laughs> ankle back in the hammock. From here, both arms are out to the side. It's gonna help give you a stable base. You're gonna swing the legs over to the right and let the knees bend as you come to that right side. Swing the legs over to the left, knees bend into the chest. We're warming up the spine, getting ready for a supine twist. Straightening the legs as the legs come to the side. We bend the knees, draw them in. Extend to the other side. Bend those knees, draw them in. And then let those knees just drop to that right side. Take that right hand and place it on the outside of that knee on that top leg. Look over the left shoulder. Remember, just let your knees fall where they're gonna fall. Don't worry about what the legs look like in this video. Your knees may not touch. Your knees may not go down to the ground. That's completely okay. This is your body. They may get there someday, they may not. It doesn't matter. You're getting a wonderful twist of the spine. Now extend those legs back to the side. You're gonna feel stiffness in the middle of your back that's completely normal. So we don't just go right over to the other side. We wanna sweep our legs side to side just to warm that spine up again. You can do this as many times as you need to. When you feel like that stiffness is subsiding, then you can let those knees drop to that left side. But go as many times as you need to. And when you're ready, those knees are gonna to drop to that left side. So those the knees are to one side, you wanna make sure the opposite shoulder blade, so right now our knees are to the left, you wanna make sure that right shoulder blade is on the mat, it's not lifted off. I like to tell my students to press the back of their head into the mat, lift the chest up a little bit, and then reposition so that you can get that right shoulder blade. If it doesn't, you can always have a blanket handy, placing it underneath there so that it's not lifted. That left hand is resting on the outside of the knee. Look over your right shoulder. Breathe deeply here. Let your breath help you in this twist. Begin to straighten the legs over to the left. Once again, that stiffness is gonna be there, so we wanna swing those legs a few times, just alleviating that stiffness of the thoracic spine. Do this as many times as necessary. And then just bring those legs back to center. We're gonna kick the legs out so that the hammock comes to the back of the knees. Just let it trap back there. Lower back is gonna press down into the mat, no space. Reach those arms behind you. Breathe in deep. Reach those hands as far away as you can. On the exhale, you're gonna curl up chin to chest and you're gonna reach for that hammock. You can do it. You're doing great. Once you grab hold of that hammock, pull, elbows in, use your biceps. Let the knees come into your chest, tuck into a tiny little ball. Slide those hands up a little higher. Pull down on the hammock and lift yourself up, staying in a little teeny tiny ball. Nice little massage of the back here as we rock back. And pull, elbows stay, drawing forward. Use the biceps to help you. Rolling up and back. Rolling up like a roly poly. And we also have the option, if this is suitable for your body, as you rock back, you can extend the legs and come back into that plow. 
rocking forward. Maybe doing that a few times. If you tried the plow and you're like, nope, that's not for me, then just keep the knees bent as we did when we first began these little rolls. Okay, as the feet come to the floor, bring the heels in closer and just take a scoot back. And you wanna make sure that as the hammock hangs directly from its attachments, it's about over the shins. Then push that hammock down so that it goes to the ankles. We're gonna keep tension in the hammock with the ankles. Fingers are gonna be facing forward. Wrists are gonna be directly under the shoulders. Check for that alignment, it's important. So the back of the wrist is facing the back of the room. Heel of the hand is directly underneath those shoulders. Press the floor away to lift the hips off the ground. Maybe you just stay there, the hips lifted off the ground. If your shoulders are low, if your body allows, shift your weight forward, lift the hips. Bring the hips back. Maybe lift beyond your original starting position and extend the legs, lift those hips. Bring it back. Give it a try. If it doesn't happen today, it's okay. We have to work towards things. Everything doesn't always happen right away. Be patient with yourself. As you bring those sit bones back to the mat, inhale those arms up high. Now keep that spine long. We're just hinging from the hips. So you may not be able to go very far. That's okay. It's a big deep stretch, back of those legs. So maybe you reach for the hammock, maybe you reach for the toes. Maybe you just bring your hands to your calves or your shins. While you're here, we're not forcing, we're finding the edge. So you're only folding forward to where you feel just that very edge where, you're, where you would have to force to go further, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna stop at that edge and we're gonna breathe. You'll be surprised if you don't push yourself and you just use your breath, you'll find that you can maybe go a little bit further naturally without forcing. So just experiment as you exhale. Maybe you can go a little deeper, maybe not today. The more patient you are, the more you focus on the breath, the more your body will be able to relax, the more those muscles will release the tension If you find you can't go any deeper, that's all right. Just stay there, continue to breathe. It will happen in time if you practice. And slowly roll back up. Now just reach the hands back. Now your hands are just a kickstand. Fingers can be towards the back of the room. You're gonna leave that right ankle in. Remove that left ankle, let that knee bend out to the side. You're going to press the ankle down externally, rotate that leg, point the toes. We're gonna just bend that knee, draw the heel in, and then take it out and around. So we're making big circles, opening up, bending the knee. So if you find that the hammock is sliding up and down the leg, two things are probably happening. Either you're not pressing down, keeping tension in the hammock, or more likely you're not sitting back far enough. So if this is the case, scoop back a little bit further and you'll find that hammock should stay put. And this is excellent for mobility in the hip. Now extend that leg out to the side. Just go to wherever it can go. That left knee bent, you're gonna flex that left foot. That flexion of the foot is really important. Take that right hand out in front of that right leg. And we're gonna press just the fingertips down, so lifting the wrist. Left arm's gonna reach over to the left side. You're gonna use that left hand to center your body. So push the floor away from that left hand so that your body is as centered as possible. And then fold forward. This is a variation of pigeon. And it's a nice way to prep for pigeon. Before going into pigeon, this is a nice place to start. Slowly begin to rise. Leave that leg out to the side. That right hand's gonna grab both sides of the hammock like a rope. 
the left arm is gonna come up to the ceiling. Now, as that left arm comes up, you're gonna let that left shoulder come up too. You're gonna to reach that, those fingertips as high as you can, so you're creating as much length in the left side of the body as possible. And once you've created all of that length, just bend at the waist to the right. Nice, strong core, inhale back to center. Exhale, bend at the waist to the right. Let that right ear fall to the right shoulder. Don't strain that neck. Inhale back up. And exhale, bend again. And see if you can go a little bit further, really stretching that left side body. And coming back up to center, that left hand can come back to the mat behind you. Right hand as well. Right leg comes to the center in front of you. And we switch. Left ankle goes in. Externally rotate that leg, press the ankle down, point those toes. Bend the knee to draw the heel in, and then take that knee out to the side, extend the leg, bring it back to center, bend the knee. So we're making big circles. Once again, if you that hammock sliding up, scoop back. Take it slow, there is no rushing here. Now swing that leg out to that left side. Both sits bones are on the mat, so make an adjustment. If, if one sits bone is not on the ground, go ahead and adjust. We're flexing that right foot that right knee is bent out to the side. That left arm is going to come in front of that leg. Fingertips only on the ground, wrists lifted. Use that right hand now to center your body over that, left, uh, that right shin. And when you're ready, fold forward. Keep pushing away with that right hand if you find that your weight, you're shifting more towards that right side. We want to be as centered as possible. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we're going to strive to try to come to the center as best as we can. Motions are stored in our hips, so this may not be your favorite, but usually what we don't like is what our body needs. So keep that in mind and be patient. Just breathe. We're not here forever, just a short time. Slowly begin to rise. Evenly place those sits bones on the mat. Left hand reaches for both sides of the hammock. Right arm reaches up. Remember, we're creating length in the right side body. From that hip, reach that arm all the way up. Shoulder comes up with the arm, bending at the waist, reaching towards the hammock, left ear to left shoulder. Inhale, back up to ceiling. Find more length, bend to the side. Inhale, back up to the ceiling. Find even more length, bend at the waist to the side and hold here. See how far you can go. Stretching that right side of the body as much as possible. And then we'll return, bringing that hand behind, bringing that left leg directly in front. We're gonna bend that knee to grab the hammock and take that ankle out. Grabbing the hammock, we're gonna flip it over the body so it comes behind you. Arms are gonna come up and around the outside of the hammock. We want that hammock to be right on top of the shoulder blades. Feet hip distance apart. We're gonna lean back so that we keep that tension in the hammock, hammock on the shoulder blades. We're gonna bend those elbows and come to goddess or cactus arms or goal posts. Elbows are wide, fingers are spread wide. We're gonna lean back into that hammock and then those fingers are gonna interlace. We're gonna use those hands and those interlaced fingers to support our head and neck. Keep drawing those elbows as wide as you can. Lean back into the hammock. Think of having an apple under your chin. Just looking up towards the ceiling or the corner where the wall meets the ceiling. Leaning back a little bit farther. Feet are planted firmly, hip distance apart. Keep leaning back, lift the hips off the ground. We're leaning back, elbows are wide, feet are planted, hips are lifted off the ground. And we're just gonna straighten those legs as best as we can and then bend the knees coming forward. Hips stay lifted. 
Make sure that you're not going too far forward. We don't want the knees coming too far over the toes. So stop before getting to that point. Pressing back, chest is lifted. Moving back and forward, bending the knees. You might notice some popping in the knees. Just keep moving, working through those. Unless of course this is causing discomfort. If it is, just keep the bum on the ground and just keep leaning back. And make sure your feet aren't gonna slip. So make sure that you're not wearing socks and that are gonna slide. And then just return that backside back to the ground. Still leaning back. Elbows are still wide. We're gonna do little windshield wipers here. So as you bring your body over to the right, your legs are gonna drop, so your knees are gonna drop to that left side. Hold it here. Keep bringing those elbows wide. Keep that left elbow down. And as those knees come up, we travel to the other side and the knees will fall to the right side. Just take that all the way over, try keeping both elbows parallel to the ground so that one doesn't lift. It may slightly, but our goal is to try to lean back and have those elbows as wide as possible. Shoulder blades squeezing together. This is such a lovely pose and such a great stretch. Coming back to center, knees come back up to the ceiling. Open up, lean back a little bit more. See if you can go a little bit further. And lift the chest, reach those hands up high. Walk the legs out. This is coming towards the end of our class today. So we're gonna bring that hammock to the back of the neck. Let it just rest like a scarf on the shoulders. Reach those arms out to the side, bend those elbows and place the palms flat on the hammock. Now bring the elbows in towards the rib cage. So our neck has a lot of delicate little bones. We wanna protect the neck, so you really wanna pull down on that hammock. You're controlling the tension. You're controlling how much pressure is on the neck. So really pull down. Elbows stay in towards the rib cage, lower back. And then keeping the chin lifted, you're gonna pull down on the left side of the hammock. As you pull down on the left side, turn your chin over the other side so that chin should come over the hammock. When you're switching to the other side, you're gonna pull down on the right side as your chin comes over to the left. You're massaging the neck. You're in control of the tension. Monitor your resistance here. You're not letting the whole weight of the neck and the, uh, press into the hammock. You're controlling the tension on the hammock. Continue moving your head side to side. And when you're finished, just remove the hammock from behind the head and lay down into your Shavasana. This completes our class today. We thank you for joining us. Please like and subscribe. Have a blessed day.